Yeah, so I'm gonna get a couple of those, you know, zero gravity chairs for like right here, you know, for your ultimate viewing comfort. It's gonna be pretty much sparse, you know, very Asian-y, modern stuff. Yeah, thinking, you know, just a bunch of candles, you know, one of those little found jobs right here. It's gonna be chill. Jesse Pinkman is a character who many viewers might sympathize with due to the great amount of suffering he endures within the Breaking Bad storyline. And although much of the suffering is caused by events not determined by the character's actions, there is also a fair deal of suffering that Jesse inflicts upon himself. One of the primary ways that he causes more pain than necessary within his life is through the process of denial. Denial is a highly common defense mechanism in which a person ignores the reality of their current situation so as to avoid anxiety and other uncomfortable emotional states. During this process, a person is deciding to not acknowledge their current circumstances or deny consequences that have resulted from past actions. A person may not only deny events which they have witnessed or been a part of in the external world, but they can also deny thoughts or ideas which are produced by their mind. By examining the character closer, we can see the ways that the theme of denial appears throughout Jesse's storyline often leading the character towards increased suffering as opposed to towards improved circumstances. With this information in mind, let's get into the analysis. Near the beginning of the show, we are provided early examples of Jesse's tendency towards denial. Following the events with Emilio and Crazy Eight, Walt and Jesse are needing to get rid of Emilio's body while they figure out what to do with Crazy Eight, and Jesse is assigned to put the body in the acid bath. This is probably the first time Jesse has been around a dead body, and it is almost certainly the first time he needs to dispose of a body. As the situation is most likely producing high states of anxiety, Jesse is looking for a way to psych himself out and motivate himself towards putting the body in the bath. At one point, he says to himself, You're all good, and all good. it's fine. Just what you need to come on. Jesse is trying to convince himself that what he is experiencing isn't real, trying to make himself believe he's handling something like an animal corpse, as opposed to admitting that he is attempting to disintegrate a recently living person into a tub of chemicals. He believes that by saying these words, that things will be different from what they actually are. Then, two episodes later, he is still reeling from what has happened to Emilio and Crazy Eight. Combo and Pete are hanging out at his house, and when Combo asks what happened to his hallway, he says the house is settling, but in reality, we know it's due to the acid bath eating through the ceiling. Pete and Combo hang for a while, but Jesse is forced to use the meth he cooked to keep them around for longer. Jesse would much rather spend time with others and forget about recent events than think about his current circumstances. He ends up smoking meth all night and then continues smoking by himself all the way till the morning. Since Jesse's friend have left him alone with his thoughts, he is again needing to distract by using meth as a coping tool, and as he soon hallucinates about gang members coming to his house to murder him, it seems Jesse has many good reasons to not face the reality of what might happen to him. Later in season 2, Jesse has been asked by his parents to vacate his Aunt Ginny's home, and his mother soon stops by the house to talk to him. As he is sleeping and unprepared for her arrival, he attempts to hide his bong and other drug paraphernalia, thinking that he can clean things up before she sees anything. Then as they start talking, he tells her that he is contemplating going to business school, that he feels he has had a wake-up call recently. But with both the drugs and the talk about school, Jesse is trying to hide what is really going on, which is that his life is in disorder without any sense of direction. We can see how he is not only trying to hide things from his mother, but he is also trying to convince himself of a false reality. Jesse often wants to make things seem better than they actually are, something that only ends up hurting himself in the end, because when we can't see reality for what it is, we can never make the proper changes or improve upon what is deficient. A little later, Jesse becomes upset that his mother is sticking to the plan to kick him out, and he contends that his mother didn't care about his aunt at all, and that Jesse was the one who was taking care of his aunt. But Jesse's mother denies this claim, and based on the trends in Jesse's life, it would not be surprising if this was another fabrication of reality, a version of things that was only true in Jesse's eyes. In the same episode, Jesse needs to stay with a friend after leaving his Aunt Ginny's place, 
As he speaks to his friend, Jesse is again presenting a false version of himself. His friend is unaware of who Jesse actually is at this point of his life, and so Jesse is talking about how he plans to move to a hip area of the city and how he is hooking up with girls left and right. When Jesse presents these false versions of reality, he is in some way attempting to make himself feel better, to convince himself that things are not so bad in his life. But his friend's wife is not trusting of Jesse, and he is forced to stay in the RV for the night. But while jumping over the fence of the junkyard, he gets covered by latrine waste and is forced to sleep in his own filth. As he lays down, Jesse begins sobbing uncontrollably, and we get the idea that Jesse's emotional reaction is caused by his sudden realization that the idea of his life and the concrete reality are not compatible. He may have a dim understanding that things need to change, while being either unwilling or unsure of how to make the needed changes. Two episodes later, Jesse has been persuaded by Walt to go and murder the meth heads who stole money from Skinny Pete. Before he enters the property, he is hyping himself up and saying things to himself like, Do not mess with me, I will bury you, because I'm crazy! Yeah, yeah, mucho loco. Similar to the scene in which he puts Emilio's body in the bath, Jesse is trying to convince himself of things that are not true. He's trying to believe that he is something that he is not. He knows that he is not a killer, nor a person who hurts others. And then when Jesse entered the house and finds the child of the meth heads all by himself, we get a glimpse of the real Jesse, which is someone who cares about others and normally has the best interests of people at heart. He quickly transitions from the crazy guy who is ready to kill to a fatherly presence, ensuring the well-being of the neglected child. Then, in the next episode, following him witnessing the crushing of the meth head's cranium, he is back in his new apartment and has been smoking weed for several days straight. He is claiming that he can't get the thought and sound of the death out of his head, and he says, I just want to forget. As he lays down to sleep, Jesse is beginning to have intrusive thoughts, thoughts that arise within our consciousness without our willingness. These thoughts appear again several episodes later following the murder of Combo, in which Jesse stays inside his house for days while chain smoking. We find out that Jesse missed the funeral and his friends are wondering where he is. Then soon after his new girlfriend Jane comes to his house and he uses heroin for the first time. In both these episodes, we see how Jesse uses drugs and other substances as ways to distance himself from thoughts about difficult and distressing parts of his life. Instead of addressing and working through what has happened, instead of confronting the thoughts, he would rather look the other way and move past as if nothing ever happened. In the aftermath of Jane's death, Jesse has gotten himself out of rehab, but he is still having difficulty dealing with the passing of his ex. In an ever vulnerable spot for Jesse, he is alone in his house trying to cope with recent events, but he is dealing with it by calling Jane's cell phone repeatedly connecting through speed dial. Instead of facing the harsh facts of her being gone, he is trying to hold on to her essence however he can. It is possible that by hearing her voice, he can temporarily disconnect from the fact of her death and return to a time of peace and serenity. But the problem is that this strategy is temporary and nowhere near a long-term solution. Near the end of the episode, Jane's number is finally disconnected and Jesse feels lost, so he goes out to the desert to cook a batch of meth. He is needing to find a new diversion, as relying on the sound of Jane's voice is no longer an option. At the start of season 4, following Gail's murder, Jesse begins to have more intrusive thoughts and in turn does his best to distance himself from reality. Early in one episode, we see that Jesse has bought a huge sound system with flashing lights, and he is listening to music turned up very loud, zoning out and chain smoking. Soon after, Pete and Badger begin talking nonsense for a while, keeping Jesse mentally occupied. But once the conversation comes to a pause, Jesse says, Yeah, man. It's quiet. You know what this, this place needs? which is followed by an intensification of things when a huge party breaks out, with even more people, sounds, and things to serve as distractions. 
As things progress, we see how he tries to keep the party going as long as possible, and that the next day when everyone is hungover, he cranks up the music and tells everyone to get up and get things started again. Meanwhile, Jesse goes to the lab to cook and keeps his headphones on full blast to try and drain out the intrusive thoughts. Finally, after three straight days of partying, everyone is wiped and looking to leave. Even Pete and Badger can't hang anymore. Jesse is realizing that he can't keep people around forever, an indication that he might need to face reality. But instead of doing so, he goes back into the empty house, sits next to the speaker, and turns it up loud, trying his best to drown out the thoughts and images that are making their way back into his head. In the next episode, Jesse is at the go-kart track, racing by himself. His face gives the impression that he has been crying, not slept at all, or possibly both. He also has little to no expression on his face, except for the moment when he screams as an attempt to let out his bottled up emotions. When he returns to his house, the party seems to have started again, but this time it's with a different type of crowd than was present before. Most of them seem to be addicts and criminals, and one guy is stealing Jesse's toaster from his house. But Jesse is so far from facing his life at this point that he could care less what people take or who is inside. As he is surrounded by madness, he sits down on the couch in the middle of everyone and lights a cigarette as if nothing in particular is happening. Then in the next episode, we see just how far Jesse has been removed from coming to grips with things. Walt goes to Jesse's house and informs him that Gail's death is being investigated and that it is important that they recount the details so as to ensure that they have their bases covered. Walt begins asking specific questions about that night, including... Soon, the Gale answered the door. Now, what happened after that? Did he recognize you? Did you say anything to each other? Did you walk into the room or did you shoot him right then and there? What? But Jesse has obviously been avoiding all details about this night since it happened, and this conversation triggers emotions that he was trying to suppress. We see Jesse begin to hyperventilate and become highly distressed and overwhelmed, staring straight ahead the whole time as memories that were just unconscious pop back into his head. When Jesse realizes he can't handle the anxiety, he requests that people in his house remove Walt for $100. Just as Jesse has placed blocks in front of him so as to obscure his vision of reality, he is attempting to block others from presenting that reality as well. Throughout much of season 4 and the early part of season 5, Jesse continues to have his struggles with denying reality as he moves towards a potential path of finally being okay with himself. Following Jesse's exit from the meth business, he has been provided time to be by himself for longer than he would like, and it seems he is having difficulty coming to grips with his past decisions and actions. Pete and Badger are at Jesse's house again high on drugs, and talking about nonsensical Star Trek scenarios. We see Jesse's face and can tell that he has not been doing much with his life since he has had the free time. He is staring out into space as his friends ramble on, but things seem different than before in that he is not participating in the conversation and is instead processing through his thoughts. He soon gets up as they're talking as it seems he's being spurred on by an internal idea. He soon goes to Saul's office and requests that his money be given to Mike's granddaughter and the parents of Drew Sharp. We can infer through these actions that he feels guilty for everything he has been involved in and wants to make amends. As opposed to denying what has occurred, he is trying to live up to his past sins so as to clear his conscience and attempt to move on. Later in the episode, we see Jesse staring at his coffee table, which is littered with cigarette butts and roaches. He is neglecting his life and all cares as he has become consistently engrossed in his thoughts, a stark contrast to the way he has hid from thoughts for most of the show. Walt soon arrives with Jesse's money and tells him to... You need to stop focusing on the darkness behind you. The past is the past. As mentioned in my previous video, for much of the show, Walt is focused on rationalizing and disconnecting from emotions, and here he is asking Jesse to do the same. But Jesse is realizing that you cannot just move past the darkness, and that in fact the path follows you in life, 
no matter how hard you try to deny things. Later that night, when Jesse is out in his car and is approached by a homeless man for some change, he stops a man and gives him thousands of dollars in cash. Jesse gets an intuition of what he can do next and proceeds to drive around a poor neighborhood in the city, throwing stacks of money into people's driveways. Not only is he trying to get rid of the money that is tainted, the blood money that has come at the expense of so many other people's lives, but he is also trying to give back to others who are in need. Jesse is committing a double act here, in the sense that he is no longer denying what the money means, where it came from, and what needed to be done to get it, but he is also no longer denying his good side, the side of himself that has been repressed for so long. This is the side that cares for children, wants to look after other people like his aunt, and has a conscience that is trying to lead him in the right direction. And as I will detail more specifically in my next video on Jesse, his ability to stop denying reality and his true nature is also the thing which leads to the path of redemption and self-acceptance. This concludes this video on the psychology of Breaking Bad. Please watch my other videos on other TV and film characters if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.